coffee with you and your friends. This morning we're going to be talking about prayer and we're going to be praying. So uh, I uh, need your full participation. Actually, God does. And we'll be going to four different passages of Scripture, and I'll be telling you which ones those are. But I think it's really important when we do pray, especially after last week, talking about revival and the 10 or 12 of you that responded came forward, that we're in motion. And I believe that uh, we need to make continue that motion with uh, concentrated prayer effort. But this morning, I'm asking God to give us more than just a prayer attitude, but a powerful prayer attitude. And so I think it's really important that uh, we need to, first of all, make sure that we're right with God. And we're going to, after this video clip, we're going to, I'm going to let you spend two minutes in silent prayer. And I want you to come before the Lord and ask him, is there anything in your life that you need to take care of before we talk about powerful prayer? So we're going to spend the next minute in silent prayer. You're going to talk to God. And you're going to ask him, is there anything I need to take care of before we continue on? Let's spend some time in prayer. This morning we're going to talk about four prerequisites for powerful prayer. I oftentimes feel like I'm left behind when it comes to my prayers. I feel like, why should the Pentecostals and the Charismatics and all those other people who really believe in the Spirit get all the answers to prayer when it comes to powerful things? Sure, the small prayers happen, but is God calling us to greater prayers, to more powerful prayers, to show His power in this world today? And I was reading a book uh, just recently, The Power of a City at Prayer. And they often tell us of the Korean churches today, that how the revival swept New York City. And it said that almost every first generational Korean church holds an early morning prayer meeting. They meet at 5 a.m. and they pray for hours. And they give it to God and they start their day every day like that. Maybe that's part of the missing part that I sense. Do you sense that too in your life, your prayer life? Do you want more in your prayer life? It sounds Amen, like a, I do. It sounds yeah. like a uh, commercial, 11.30 at night. Uh, the church in Uganda, uh, they interviewed one pastor there, and he said that they prayed 24 hours a day. They had people every minute of the day praying. They say that they feel like if somebody's not praying, they, they leave a gap. They're so committed to prayer that they're willing to pray 24 hours a day. 
a day. And you think to yourself, who has time for that? But I should say, who doesn't have time for that? If we truly believe that we're in spiritual battle today and that we need to spend time with our God, then I believe that we need to reconsider how we do our prayer times and how much we pray. In the book it says, okay, you may not pray for an hour, this Ugandan pastor says, but start just 15 minutes a day. Just five, one five, 15 minutes a day and begin to change your prayer life. And he says that God will begin to do amazing things for you. So this morning, I don't think God just wants us to pray. I think God wants us to pray powerfully. And if we do that, I believe that our faith will increase and we'll begin to see things that God will do and because he is a God who is mighty and great. We have sung about that this morning. Do we really believe it? Are we willing to take the time to be able to spend time with God and ask him to begin to do the wonderful things that he says he will do and that he can do? Our first prayer must be desperate, number one. In life, we approach prayer in various ways. Sometimes I hear about something, sure, I'll pray about that. But other times, I feel such an urgency in my heart that I pray and I am desperate before God. Please, God. Please, Lord. You say that you can answer prayer. Will you please answer this prayer for this person or for me? I desperately need you. We must admit our utter dependence on God. And sometimes as Christians, I think we walk along and we think, oh, I can handle that. Oh, that's not too bad. You know, I can, I can deal with that. But no, every time we pray, there must be a dependence on God that says, I utterly need you. And I think it would cut down our anxious prayers. Philippians 4, 6, I think, speaks directly to me. It says, do not be anxious about everything, Jim. But in all things, by, situ by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. If I was more of a utterly dependent prayer, I honestly believe that the things that cause me uh, angst would no longer, I would no longer be anxious. But I, because I know that God is truly the one who can do all things. And I can go to him anytime. Amen. And he Amen. will take care of the issue. John 16, 24. Until now you've asked for nothing in my name. Ask you shall receive that your joy may be full. God is saying, I will answer your prayers. I will do these things, but you need to come to me. You need to pray. And oftentimes we don't go to God because maybe we just don't utterly depend on him. Two, we can cry out to God for help. And this is the key verse, Psalm 142, 5 and 6, if you want to turn to that one again. But David's our example. Here he says, I cry out to you, Lord. I say you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry. For I am in desperate need. Rescue me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. The psalmist was being pursued, and he was desperate. And God answered his prayer. Today you may be desperate because of cancer in your life, demonic attack, depression. Cry out to God. Make a prayer into a powerful prayer, believing that God can do amazing things in your life if you truly are desperate for him. Three desperate moments in David's life. Once again, we see a multitude. Goliath, nine foot whatever, five to 700 pounds, a very big man. And God answered his prayer and he delivered him. First Samuel 23, seven, King Saul tries to kill David. I'm sure David cried out to God because of the jealousy of Saul and God was able to protect David. First Samuel 3, six, his own army wants to kill him because some families were taken and they should have been protected. And the scripture says he prayed to the Lord. And the Lord told him that they'd all be brought back safely. Utter dependence on God. Hezekiah, truly utter dependence here. He gets the news, you're dying shortly. What does he do? He falls on his bed and he begins to cry out to God. Please, God, if there's any way you can heal me, please, God, heal me. And before the prophet leaves the palace, God speaks to him and says, Go back and tell Hezekiah, I will give him 15 more years. 15 more years. God heard his desperation, his cry. Five, and there's Nehemiah's prayer in front of King Artaxerxes. Face is downfallen. The king says, What's up? 
says, I'm sad, my city's in ruins, and I need to go and build it. And the king, he prays before the Lord, and the king says, I will give you what you need. He prayed to the God of heaven. Nehemiah was desperate. There's no way he could do it on his own. But he asked God, and the king helped him through that process of building the walls again. Recently, I worked the election, and sometimes when big events happen in my life, I just can't turn it off at night. And I went to bed early, and I was supposed to get up at 5 o'clock to be at the uh, polling station at 6. And uh, so 9.30, went to bed. 10.30, came by, I'm still awake. 11.30, came by, I'm still awake. 12.30, came by, I'm still awake. I'm just tossing and dirty. I get up, I get down. I think I was asleep by 1.30. I'm thinking, oh, I gotta get to five. I'm gonna be a mess. And I, I was a mess. I, you know, I look like I had been drinking all night long. I just like, you gotta be kidding. I said, Lord, please, you gotta give me strength today. I'm in charge of all these people. So I left a note for Dell. I said, please, Dell, pray for me, because I am just so tired. So I get there, and all of a sudden, I am not as tired as I was before. And God gave me an opportunity not only to be hopefully a good leader, but also to share with my co-leader. And uh, he is a piece of work, a nice guy, uh, but uh, definitely we are polar opposites. And yet I, after seven hours, uh, being with him for 14 after seven, we began to, I began to share the Lord with him. We got to know each other. And he opened up and he shared about his life. And he said, you know what, Jim? He says, at, at about hour nine, he said, what time's your service? And I, I, was, I had such a good relationship with him. I said, I'm not going to tell you. He says, what? I said, no, I don't want you to come to my church. <laughs> and he laughed. And I said, well, it's 10 o'clock. He says, well, he says, you might see me since some Sunday uh, in the summer after the NFL is over. He says, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it, that's better than rejection. I mean, that's so Tobin, if you're watching, I want to see you some Sunday. <laughs> Desperate. When you pray, are you desperate? Because I believe desperation to God means that God is going to begin to do some things in your life, in this, in this church. I think we're coming to the point of desperation. We need God to step in. Second thing, prayer must be united. Sure, you can pray alone, number one, on your own, of course. God says go in your prayer closet. Matthew 6, 6, and when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. And he talks about private prayer. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, pray without ceasing. But number two, God wants us to pray more together. 2 Chronicles 7, 14, because of the circumstances that the nation was in, God says, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. And I will forgive their sin and heal their land. God encouraged the nation to pray together. And I believe that God loves it when we pray together in unity. When we say, this is what we believe God wants for us. And we are all in agreement that this is what it is. Matthew 18, 19, and 20. Again, truly I tell you that if two of you on earth agree about anything they ask for, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three gathered in my name, there I am also. To an agree, agreeing together. Jesus and Paul, number three, encouraged unity. Jesus in John 17, he says, I have given them the glory that you have given me, that they may be one, I and them, and you and me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Unity in prayer, I believe, is so important. Where two or three are gathered together, then we can have unity. There's no room for disunity when it comes to prayer. Paul also in Hebrews 10, 23 says, let us hold unswervingly to the hope we profess for those, for he who is promised is faithful. We have a common agreement that when we pray, that we pray together, and that we pray in God's will, and we pray what is gonna glorify the Lord, not for ourselves, but for God and for his people. First Timothy 2, 8, I want men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. We cannot pray effectively if there are disputes among us. And thus I believe it's so important to keep a short list in your life of people who have offended you. And do all you can to make sure that you are right with them 
If they won't forgive you, that's up to them. But you have a responsibility for your own things in your own life. And that will affect our efficiency in prayer. Number four, the early church practiced unity in prayer. And there are a lot of things that the early church has come under fire for, but in the early stages, they were amazing. Acts 2, 42 and 43, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and to prayer. Prayer is so important. How important is prayer in your life? Do you find yourself many times during the day being prompted by the Holy Spirit to pray for someone, and you say, no, no, I'm too busy now? Or do you take that opportunity, and do you pray? I believe one of the secrets, one of the main things of the early church was that they took time to pray. That when God spoke to them, they truly responded. Five, there's more power with God when we pray together. God gives us the formula for a powerful prayer. God plus unity plus many who pray equals powerful prayers. God loves it when his people pray together. I think it's really important that you know that this next week that all of your board members are going to fast and pray each day of the week. That each one has picked a day. And that uh, I invite you to begin that process this week. Maybe you're picking a day to maybe giving up something. Maybe it's not food. Maybe it's coffee. Maybe it's a, a fun thing you do. But showing God that you're serious. And Praise also praying Lord. about the church. Amen. So that's Monday through Friday, I believe, this next week. Powerful prayer. I think of Nineveh. And how we have such a contrast with uh, Jonah. Not wanting to go and finally going. And then when he goes, all of a sudden the first day his feet touch the ground. The people, the king says, oh, what have we done? Like, we need to change. And everybody, they, they put sackcloth on everything. Even the animals. They dress in sackcloth and ashes and they say, there goes a horse. Put sackcloth on that horse too. Make sure everything is humble before the Lord. And maybe he will change his mind. And God did. God changed his mind. And the judgment that he had for them was stayed because they urgently sought God. Chapter 3, verse 8. Let everyone call urgently upon God. Who knows, maybe he will relent and have compassion on us. It's all right there. It's so simple, it's hard. Because all we got to do is pray. Pray earnestly. Pray urgently. Ask God for the things. And God says, you know, I won't give you that because I'm just not having a good day today. God promises that he will give us good things. And we need to simply come to him and ask for things. Do you believe that? Amen. I do. Amen. I believe that we have a powerful, mighty God. And that his ear is always inclined to us. But sometimes we just don't speak into his ear. Because we either forget or we're too busy. Or it's not a priority. I'm saying today, Cedarbrook, that it needs to become more of a priority. I think the way we're direct, our direction is that God is saying, I want to give you some things. I want to show you some things. I want to do some amazing things in your church life, but I need to hear from you. Will you begin to become a stronger prayer? We're going to take another short time, minute, and I want, I want you to pray about these things that I'm on the list. Number one, pray for God's direction in regards to our church when it comes to outreach. Ask God, what part do I pay? Number two, ask God to supply us with workers. When you ask for God to reach out and bring people in, we need people to make sure that they receive them. Number three, pray for our finances. God can provide. And number four, pray for revival in our hearts, in our minds, even more that has happened. So those four things, revival, workers, outreach, and finance. Let's take a moment and take them to the Lord right now.
The third thing we see is prayer must be sustained to get a powerful prayer. Psalm 105.4. We'll be reading that in a moment. The first thing is prayer is not something we pick up today and drop tomorrow. If you begin to pray, pray every day. And you ask God to make sure that it is what his will is, that it will be done. I think of the widow in the Bible with the unjust judge. Every day the scripture says in Luke 18 that she went and kept pestering him and kept pestering him. So finally he says, it's not because you, you get justice, it's because you're just pestering me so much, I'll give you what you ask. And Jesus says, it's not that God is like the unjust judge, but it's the attitude of the lady coming, knowing that sooner or later, that she will receive what is due her, not because we're pestering God, but because God will give us graciously. The second thing we see here is David's encouragement to pray, Psalm 105, 4, the key verse. Look to the Lord in the strength. Seek his face always. Sometimes in our lives, and I'm sure you'll agree, that there are things that just don't come right away. You have to keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. I know for my dad's salvation, I prayed for 20-some years until God finally brought him to Jesus. Sometimes we need to keep praying and asking God, please, Lord, give me justice. Please allow me to do that. And yet there are times when I forgive, I, I forget or I give up. I think it's not going to happen. And God says, continue to pray. The third thing we see is James' encouragement to pray. James 5. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. That's why it's so important to be in the right relationship with God because if we believe the scriptures, if we believe what God has written in his word, that the prayer of a righteous person Man or woman is powerful, and things will happen. Don't give up, dear folks. Continue to pray, asking God to make sure that he does something in this case. Case in point, Shiloh. Come on up. Uh, you probably did. Who prayed for Shiloh on the prayer chain yesterday? Anybody get that one? Okay, good. Super. So Shiloh's going to share for a moment. Hopefully she doesn't fall asleep while she's talking. Uh, so Shiloh, Shiloh, um, I got a call yesterday from Donnie, and uh, can you just tell us briefly what, what you're going through in store? Um, yeah, that's okay. Um, since um, April, uh, I was given morphine for my back. Um, and so I, yeah, um, I decided, I, I've got, you know, as much as I want, but. I have more faith in the Lord that I don't need the morphine, but believe me, once you've been on it, it's really hard to get off. <laughs> and uh, so I've finally been off of it for probably about five days. I just weaned myself off, and um, but with that comes no sleep. So I think the other day I had about 30 hours, I think he said. 36 uh, hours off. Awake. And, um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a spiritual battle, really, because it's, you know, I think the devil wants, it's easy to take, takes the pain away, but I have more faith in the Lord. Amen. But it's, um, it's tough. It's tough. Yeah. Thanks. Now she's the only one that has permission to fall asleep during the sermon. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, praise the Lord. So like I said, sometimes it takes persistence. Jesus said, and it's in reference to demons, but I think it's a reference to a lot of things. Only with prayer and fasting can these things come about where it changes. And so yesterday I got the call from Donnie. I called Shiloh, and I said, what's up? And I said, let's, let's pray. And we just claimed the blood of Jesus, and he said, Lord, give her sleep. So I'll call you back about 3 o'clock. I called her back about 3.30, and I said, okay, have you got no? Okay, we're going to pray again, because we, we're not going to let this one go. We're going to hold on to this like a pit bull until finally God gives us some relief. And I would, I would pray that you would begin to pray like a pit bull for Shiloh. Mm -hmm. You would begin to say, Lord, she is your daughter, and you promise that you'll take care of her. You will do this. And we believe with all of our hearts. You know, and when it's the darkest, that's the time when God is going to come through. And I truly believe that with all my heart. I would not be a pastor, and I definitely would not be a Christian. We need to believe that, folks. I think that's when we get to the point of desperation. We say, God, 
The world says you're dead, but you're not dead. You are alive. And we need to believe that in our prayers. The more we pray, the more we're saying, God, I believe you, and Satan, I don't believe you. So pray for our sister and sustain your prayers. Do not give up because that's what the, that's what the devil wants us to do. The fourth thing we see here, prayer must be spirit inspired. And I think that's really important for us because the spirit reminds us, he inspires our prayers. He reminds us of what we read in the word. He reminds us of what the things that Jesus said. Jesus said, you will do even greater things than I have done. And that's the kind of follower I want to be. I want to be a follower who believes the master, who says, Lord, if you said this, I believe it. And I'm going to follow through and I'm going to pray against the very gates of hell. And I believe that God's word is going to stand. And then when I pray, my heart is in it and my soul is my spirit. And can you imagine if all of us took on the attitude of saying, we're not going to let go. We are not. And Satan's going to go, hey, we got an issue over here at Cedar Brook. Because there are some people here that are seriously praying about things and it's really ticking me off. And I don't want to be ticked off. So we're going to put a little extra pressure on them. But you know what? We don't have to worry about that because we have the protection of the Lord upon us. And who is Satan in the name of Jesus compared to Jesus Christ, our Savior? Amen. And we can pray. Number two, so the Holy Spirit teaches us everything we need to know about prayer. It says, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said and that is so cool when you're praying because there are times when I'm praying, I don't know what to say when I start, but when I get into it, the Spirit of God begins to give me verses. The Spirit of God begins to give me confidence. And he teaches me over and over again. He reminds me. That's what that word also means as to what Jesus has said in the past. And that we are more than conquerors through Christ, our Savior and King. That we are not the ones that are going to be defeated. Satan is already defeated. And things like this are very small things to God. And God says, how much do you really want it? And he says, you need to show me. And I believe that we're going to start showing God just how much we care. And that will turn this around. And things in our lives, in our church, will change because God's people have stood up and said, I'm going to pray about this. And I'm really going to pray about it. I'm not just saying, well, that's nice. To I'm really going to pray about this. How about you? Will you take on that attitude? It sounds kind of uh, uh, quite strong, but it needs to be strong. We are in a battle. We are in a battle. And prayer is our weapon. He empowers us. Acts 1 8. But when you receive the power, when the Spirit comes upon you, we need to pray powerful prayers because we have a powerful God. The Holy Spirit is God. He is God. He's not an it, He is God. And He brings meaning to our life. Romans 8, 16, the key verse here. The Spirit of God testifies with our spirit that we are the children of God. Since we are truly God's children, we have every right through Jesus to ask for powerful prayers. See, he makes us one with God. The key is God is our Father and we are in his family. And through Jesus, he gives us every right to ask for these things. Satan may say to us, you have no right to ask for that. No way. I have every right because of Jesus in my life. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit. We are never alone. We are never without words. The scripture tells us that the Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to groan when we don't know the words. And he begins to put those into, into prayer for us so that they're before the throne of grace. And we are never without words because the Holy Spirit lives within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we have the power through Christ. Today, I'm going to ask you before we go to our last song. And I tell you, did I tell you, Tracy, which song was? I didn't think so. Let's, let's go with number two. Can you do that? You have a couple minutes because we're going to go to prayer. Our last prayer time with God this morning. I want you to ask God to do something powerful in your life. Because you believe that God can do it. Not just a prayer, but a powerful prayer. Maybe it's someone who you've worked on for years and they just are not budging when it comes to Jesus. This morning, 
you name their name, and you ask God to bring them to him. Maybe it's healing. Maybe someone in your life or someone you know needs healing. Today you say, Lord, I believe that you can do a powerful thing by healing this person. Whatever it is, I'm going to give you time once again at the end of the service. That way the team can come up and you pray. And I'll say amen at the end. Go to God one more time and ask him to do something powerful in your life or someone else's.